Good evening. This is the June 27, 2018 meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals for the Town of Newcastle. Secretary. First case is Curly. Tom Curley, 45 Inniewood Road, and I have to admit, I mm -hmm. think that I'm like I, I'd assume there'd be a screen here this evening, and oh, is that right? Because everything is right here. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really, <laughs> really good. <laughs> so I'll just have to. We wait have the plan. Okay. Have plan. Great. Just I know you do. So I'll just give it a shot here. Uh, <laughs> just uh, just a minute on the history of the property, which I think is kind of interesting. <laughs> Across the road from us, any wood road you may know, is a Newcastle Stanwood pumping station for the New Croton Aqueduct. And that is also was a construction site in 18, early 1890s to build the aqueduct. The shafts are there for construction. There are also shafts for the pumps. And back in 1890, the way they did these things was with mules. So they had to build a barn, and the barn is across the street. And the center two-story piece you see in these drawings and, and images is actually the shell of the old barn. And over time, additions have been put on to make it a, to make it a house. I think the first record in town for it as a residence is 1893, or at least the construction of the building was 1893. And everything that's been done in addition is in the town records, so it's, it's all okay. The aqueduct actually runs down our driveway, it bisects our property. And when they built it, uh, the barn, they also built a well out back, which is abandoned now. So that, with the, uh, with the additions and what you see there is essentially the house we bought. We haven't put any additions on it. Uh, in the meantime, there had also been, before we bought the house, a swimming pool built with a pool house and a chicken coop a long time ago out back and also a separate three-car garage. So those are essentially the structures on the property. We abandoned the pool a long time ago just because we weren't using it, so we filled it in. Uh, the, and we had to take down the chicken coop because it was falling down. It was just dangerous. But all the other structures are still on the property. It's our intention to take down the pool house. The pool house is actually a pumping station for the pool. It's a pump, a pump house for the pool. We intend to take that down as part of the demolition of the project. So you'll see in the, in the I don't even have drawings, I apologize. You'll see in the drawings, it's probably hopefully evident from the photographs also, that there is an existing screen porch, which is on the east side of the building, which you can see from the road. It's a one-story screen porch, which is about almost 300 square feet, a little less, I think. And we use that every summer. We've been on the property for 25 years, and we live out there in the summertime. And for a long time, we've always sort of said, wouldn't it be great to actually make this a year-round room with a fireplace in it so we can sit in there in the wintertime as well? And we're ready to do that project. We've got a contractor. We have drawings, as you see. And, but not only replace it in kind, in footprint, but if we're going to do this, let's make a bigger room that can serve not as sort of a smaller room outside, but like a great room outside. So we could put a dining room sort of set in there and then a living room set in there also and use it as a year-round as a year-round room. So the projection to make that bigger goes out towards the back. It doesn't go towards the road. It goes, it goes toward the back, and it goes out an extra 12 feet with an extra about a three-foot porch on top of that. And the, the interior ends up being in the neighborhood of about 480 square feet as opposed to the lesser square footage. So there is an ask for greater square footage. The front yard setback is 75 feet. The building clearly you know, was put there before. And I think that the actual setback of the building now is around 13, 14 feet. We don't intend to move to, to, to do anything towards the road or towards the east. Everything would be towards the north, towards the back of the property. And so our hope is that, first of all, the building's grandfathered. Second of all, there's already the footprint of a structure there. Now, I understand it's not actually an enclosed structure. It's a, it's a porch, right? 
It's not a house, it's not really a building. So I understand there's a special consideration there. But it'd still be uh, one story. And we think that as a result of doing this, the architecture of the proposal would actually, we think, contribute more to the neighborhood uh, than its porch does. And we have, I think, we've submitted images of the, adjo uh, the adjoining neighbors. And um, I guess that's a summary. If there's anything you'd like to know more. How close are the adjoining neighbors? There is, uh, geez, I have a, uh, yeah, thanks. Yeah. I have a, I've got a good word, but I can't see it. But there are, So <clears throat> this is actually something you guys uh, publish for uh, public notice. So this is us, obviously. The pumping station is here. There is a two-story family home here. There is a one-story. This, this, this house is actually an old Sears Roebuck house here. So you probably imagine the architecture of that. This is a raised ranch over here. And then the next uh, adjoining houses are actually way back here and way back here. But and those are the houses that are closest to this improvement that you're making? Yes. The improvement is, will be right here. So it's these two houses and the pumping station, and these guys are way back. Now, admittedly, it's a prominent location from the road, so it's not like the, nobody's going to see it other than these neighbors. It's, it's a feature of, of the road like all the homes are. But the, I have a question. You could the construction is going to go back, though. It's going to go back towards the back. Back of the, of the house. Away from the road, straight back. Because right now you, you see three windows of the, of the porch right now from the road. Right. Let me see if I can find the view from the road. I think it's in here. One more. I think. Here. Is this it? That's the view from the road. That's the front of the house, and that's the porch right now. Right, okay. And so this facade of the, of the new addition would exactly match that dimension. Okay. And it would be, that corner would be the same corner. And the other, this is facing, we're looking at the north elevation now. I'm sorry, looking at the south elevation south now. Elevation. The east elevation would be in the same location also. And so the larger part of the addition would be, sorry, ah, here you go. This might describe it better. So now we're sort of around to the north side of the house. Right. Right? And you see the porch. Right. So what would happen, what's proposed is, you see this wing over here, which is actually the office yeah. study? Yeah. This new addition would come out to the face of that one. Okay. So they'd match each other, right, in terms of massing, and it would project uh, due north in that direction. Not only on the east wall, but also on the west wall. Mm -hmm. So it's really just coming out 12 feet further to the north, okay. is the proposal. And you're not doing anything with the middle? No, well, we're gonna put a patio in there. Okay. The, I, see, the other, the other situation we have now <clears throat> is that you come in the house from the driveway through a door and to get into the main living area you have to go through the kitchen it's been that way for 25 years it's been that way for longer than that it's just the way the thing was laid out so, and so i'm sorry so what we'd like to do is to when we do this to actually make the walkway from the driveway go by this facade and go directly into the new 
main room, so that becomes the formal entry. So I'm looking at the um, the main survey on the, the, I guess the site plan, and what I'm seeing here is that the entire existing structure is outside of setbacks now. It's all non-conforming. The entire thing. It's also in the 150 foot wetland setback as well. Right. Okay. But um, and so everything here is currently non-conforming legal. Uh, what you're proposing is um, you're not changing the existing dimensions except in one small respect. And how many feet would that be? In in dimension, it would be 12, in in length and in, in length, it would be 12 feet out and 16 feet wide. Yeah, but is that within but the same footprint? Footprint? No, no. It's an addition. Well, it's, it's an addition. It's, it's lawn there now. Okay. All right. It's to make the room bigger. Okay. Um, but uh, it doesn't look like it is um, uh, substantial from the standpoint of the the entire structure and and the way it's situated and and way it's uh, seen from the road or anything else. It's uh, to me, it, it looks like it's a um, extremely innocuous change. It's going to make our lives a lot better. But uh, in terms of what your concerns are, I I, I would agree. Yeah, right. Extremely. So you know. I'm just to clarify one point, and, and I understand you're legally existing non-conforming, and we've done this before, and there's nothing you can do about I'm it. Sure, you can't yeah. pick up the house and move it and everything. Um, but our job, our job table. should we decide to grant this, is to grant the minimum variance possible for you to achieve sure. your desired end. Um, but I have a question, because on your application, you're saying that you have, you, you uh, want to be 19 feet from the front yard, but on the plan it shows 21 feet. Which one is correct, and why is there, why is there a discrepancy? The discrepancy is that when I reviewed the drawings before I came to an informal review with the building department, uh, the gentleman's name was Bruce. I think that he was temporary. I'm not sure he's he's with us anymore. I think there's somebody permanent, but he suggested that for reasons of what happens in construction, he just said maybe what you ought to do is just ask for a couple of more feet just to be sure that you are in a situation where if something happens, you don't have to go back to the zoning board or you build it and you're in nonconformance with the approval. Okay, so we've, the done that. we've done that before. I just wanted to get it on the record why, and if it's okay with the building department, then we'll leave it at the 19 feet. Yeah, th yeah, good. That's the only reason. I mean, it is where we want it to be. We know where it's going to be in the ground. He yep. just wanted to make sure there might, wouldn't be a problem. Perfectly understandable. Thank you. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes <coughs> to speak to this application? No. Any other questions by the board? No. I move that we close the public hearing. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. Okay. aye. I'm sorry, Chairman. Yes. I'm sorry, excuse me. I didn't get there quick enough. Okay. We're still in the process right now. I mean, the drawings are the drawings. But we're still in the process of thinking that if we lock ourselves in, uh, not to make the building any bigger, but in terms of the coverage of a uh, non-pervious non surface, like extending a patio or uh, extending a walkway, if there is anything in what you all decide tonight which would prevent us from going back because we'd have to be changing the coverage, is there sometimes, I know in the planning board, will I think it's typical for the town. I don't know for your jurist for what you guys do. But to give like a 15%, especially on coverage, a 15% grace. Now, that's a new development. I'm not sure it's in additions. And I'm not sure that would apply here. But I thought I should ask the question. So you've mm. never heard anything like that before right. in our existence? Right. Uh, it's not the way this board operates. OK, that's fine. But, but looking at your, your, um, your coverages, um, you have to do something quite significant for it to impact any of these um, thresholds. Yeah, the numbers are pretty benign. I think. Yeah, you're pretty well covered there. Right. So no people, pun intended on the have coverage. Have a lot of leeway, <laughs> but uh, that was good. <laughs> you have a lot of leeway in, in development coverage, um, but if it's within uh, 
if it's outside of the setbacks, will he still need to come and make an application? I, I don't think if he's not, if he's not moving within where the variance is, if it's a 20, if he's allowed a 20 foot variance, unless you, is, well, is, uh, with his future. He, no, I know, but unless you in, include a condition saying he can't increase the size within that variance, you know, so it no. would be dependent on where the structure was located, I get, you know. So, I'm sorry, let me just be clear. I'm not talking about increasing the building size. You're talking about I know that you can put patty, I know you can put impervious surface in a in a in a in a yard setback. So, I wouldn't be asking for encroachment in the yard because I think there's a matter of right to do that. Mm -hmm. What I'd be asking for is just increase in the coverage numbers that are represented and approved in the hopefully approved in the application. Yeah, we're, we're, you're not approving the yeah, coverage. We're not approving coverage. You're not asking Steve's for a variance with respect for coverage. So. Okay. Don't need one, right? Right, you don't no. require okay. one. So. Got it. Tonight we're just dealing with your front yard Got variance it. request. Very good. So it's a different uh, venue for that. Okay, good. Well, I think there would just be a building issue if you wanted to add a, um, you know, impervious. If you wanted to change the plans, that would be part of the building. That would be a separate variance if he's going beyond the setback. I'm not going beyond the building coverage that's in the drawings, which would be hopefully approved here. No, but if you're put, if you are talking about extending a patio, right, right, um, and you're not going beyond the, the the allowable development coverage, but the patio is going to be located outside of the legal setbacks, even though. You, you have an existing non-conforming, you might still need an application. Right, you'd still need a permit and an application for a variance change if you go within that 20 feet. To, to, build a, to build a walkway? Yes, back in 1995, that code changed. Now, walkways are different than patios right. or terraces. So you're allowed to have a walkway, you know, okay. and there, there are constraints to that. But to build a terrace okay, that's going I didn't to know be, that. a, be okay. a size, then you would be visiting us for a permit for that and a variance. Okay. Well, we'll cross that bridge if we need to. Uh, it it would, shouldn't be a problem. It's just it's time. The, the, the trouble of making the application. It's time. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Thanks. Uh, pardon for the interruption. No uh, I move that we close public hearing. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 I'll make a motion. <coughs> I move that the curly application for a front yard variance for 56 feet to deconstruct a screened-in porch and replace it with um, a new enclosed structure uh, of approximately 400 feet. Um, for the following reasons, this is a pre-existing non-conforming. There will be no uh, undesirable change producing the character of the neighborhood. The benefit cannot easily be sought through other means or methods. The variance is substantial. Uh, the variance will not have an adverse effect or impact on the physical environment. Uh, uh, this uh, was a uh, self-created uh, circumstance. Uh, these reasons you will have, uh, and there are no, uh, no neighbors to speak in opposition. You have six months to start, one year to complete, uh, and we will need a, you're going to put a new foundation in? Yes. Yep. So you need a foundation survey? Yes, I do. Yep. Uh, prior to getting started. Can we just confirm the size of the variance that the board is granting? Is it going to be the 56 feet? 56. Uh, well, the variance, yeah, the variance is going to be 56 feet. Okay. So that's for nine. So that's 19 feet from the from the 19 front feet from the line. Okay. I'll second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Pandich. Good evening. I'm Mary Scott, representing Suzanne and Richard Pandich, who are here tonight. We are seeking four variances. Um, the Pandich home was built in the 1930s as part of four homes that are clustered around a, a um, parking circle that um, extends off Quaker Road. And they're non-conforming. Pandage's property is 0.33, and it's a half-acre zone. So um, every property there is non-conforming in some way. 
We are looking to legalize an existing shed, which is, it, and in addition, there are actually two front yards because we have Marcourt and then we have Quaker Road down here. And even though we're set back a whole property from Quaker Road, this line becomes a front yard setback. So it's a small shed. I will pass this around. You can see the picture of it. Um, it's four feet from the front in one direction, 18 feet from the front on the Marcourt side. Um, although it's relatively close to the neighbor, the neighbor's garage is what faces it, so, and the house is beyond that. So you can see the shed's here, the garage is here, the house is here, so there's no sight line from the house to the shed. The other part of the project is there's an existing open porch that we want to replace with an enclosed dining room. And for that piece, we're okay on the front yard setback, but on the rear yard setback, we're at 35 where 40 is um, required. So that requires a single set, a setback. The fourth variance is for coverage because we have a driveway going in. And once again, because it's a non-conforming lot, it cuts down on the amount of um, usable coverage. And we have the hardship of a quarter of the circle being counted as impervious coverage for this property. So I'll uh, pass this around. Um, we feel that the design of the addition is in keeping with the house and with the other cottages mm -hmm. in this group. Um, I didn't know that. The shed is quite small and really is kind of, co it, it's, it's protected from Marcourt by plantings and by the neighbor, there are plantings and the garage, as I said. When was the shed erected? Um, there's been a shed on the property for over 30 years. Do you mean this shed or some well, version of it? Was, there was another shed that fell down and we replaced it in the same location with a smaller shed, actually. But, Did you use the microphone? Yeah, oh. microphone. You got to come up. Um, if you could introduce yourself to yeah, us, please. Suzanne Pandich. Um, the original survey when we moved, when we bought the house, showed a shed on the property. Um, from what we can tell, there's been a shed there for a long time. But um, when we moved there, there was a shed in that location. Um, it was run down and kind of, you know, so we decided to knock that one down and actually brought in a smaller one, which we put in a very similar location. So, how long ago was that? Um, that's uh, four or five years ago, maybe. So we replaced the shed that had been there. And you also have a generator, right? That, um, yeah, we did. We variance for yes, it. about about a year or so ago. And that is in your front yard, North Michael. That's well, well it, it, it's it, 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 I can't figure out what a front yard and a side yard is because um, it's on the Marcourt side. Right. Okay. And okay. there's a big elevation change when you go from our house to Marcourt, and. It, there's a huge wall and everything. You, on that side, you can't see anything. Okay. So you're getting rid of your porch? Yeah, we have a, a roofed porch that's there now and was there when we moved in. And we're looking to sort of enclose that same porch. You're not changing the footprint of the porch, correct? Um, it extends back a little bit, about five feet. You're increasing the size? We are increasing the size. <coughs> oh, I see that, okay. It's just too narrow for a functioning dining room. But it, it, it doesn't extend past the existing house setback. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak to this application? Mark, please come forward. It says nasty next door neighbors. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Gray Williams. You could, you could pull that down towards you, sir. I am Gray Williams. Uh, we live at 376, which is the direct next door neighbor. We are the ones most impacted by this addition. I mean, it's directly in our line of sight. We support the application. We feel that the variances that are requested 
will actually improve the neighborhood uh, and uh, make it more desirable for all of us. We also feel that the uh, changes desired are in keeping with other changes, including to our property, which we're good enough to approve, which have made our homes more livable and have improved their value. Mary, all your numbers, no, no, wait a second now. <laughs> all your numbers are good for your requested variances, but you chipped yourself on the FAR, which doesn't impact your application at all, um, but I'm gonna have it corrected. Uh, you, your, your, your maximum permitted number was 2950, it's actually 3245. So that gives you a little, a little more leeway. If you ever do anything again, we should we have this. We ever do a second story? We should have, well, you never know. We should have it in the record. Okay. And, and your proposed is 1730 rather than 1742. So our secretary will fix that, which is going to help your client someday in the future. Okay. But the other numbers are great this month. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. I think you need a hobby. <laughs> I'm good. Nope, I'm good. Move you close the public hearing. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> I'll make a motion. Uh, move that we approve the application of Richard and Susan Pandage, 378 uh, Quaker Street, um, for two front yard variances for an existing shed. Uh, rear yard variance for the replacement of an existing porch and a, uh, and, and a new dining room and a development coverage variance for a single family resident, for the entire single family residence um, for the uh, following reasons. The uh, requested variances uh, are, let's see, what's the footage? You could here. You can go by this, I guess. In, in there, so mm -hmm. you can get in and put the footages on the. Oh, here. Do you want the letter? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So it's a front yard reduction from 50 feet to 4 feet for the purpose of legalizing the existing shed. A front yard reduction from 50 feet to 18 feet for the purpose of legalizing an existing shed. Um, and a rear yard reduction from 40 feet to 35 feet for the purpose of replacing the existing open porch with a new dining room and a development coverage variance from 4,490 to 4,620 which includes the existing driveway and terrace as well as walkways, house and shed. Um, variance total of 130 square feet. Um, for the following reasons. The uh, applicant has uh, shown how the uh, requested improvements are going to benefit the, both the applicant and the neighborhood um, and uh, are minimal. And well, part, to, it may be easier if you address the shed variances in one format and then the other, the coverage and the, the variance for the house in a separate, um, sort of as two separate um, categories. I think it might, might work um, more shed appropriately. Right. With the two front yards. Right, the two front yards for the shed and then the ones for the one for the coverage. It, you know, I think it may just simplify, it may express the matter a little more directly. So. Well, they're really two different the issues. The applicant has shown that the, the shed has been there for many years um, without any objections from uh, any of the neighbors. Um, it has been reduced in size over the years and uh, provides a, uh, a benefit to the applicant. It is uh, not visible uh, nor um, has, uh, have the neighbors um, objected. Uh, they have, in fact, um, said that they're uh, in approval. So notwithstanding the, um, the substantial nature of the app, uh, of the, uh, uh, of the, um, requested, uh, 
variance for the shed. Um, the granting is will not create an undesirable change to the character of the neighborhood or detriment to nearby properties. No other feasible method is available to the applicant, which is likely to achieve the benefits sought. And uh, we've indicated that it is a substantial variance, but the other factors outweigh um, that factor. Uh, will not have a, uh, an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental condition of the neighborhood or district. Um, and the applicant purchased the property with the shed in place, so it's not really a self-created hardship from that standpoint. Um, with respect to the uh, variance for the roof over the porch, over the patio, um, I, I mean, converting the uh, patio into a dining room addition and the slight addition to the um, setback uh, that is currently in the same position as the existing structure except for a five-foot extension, which is minimal. Um, no neighbors have written in opposition. They are in approval of the granting of the variance. They have indicated uh, that they believe it would improve the character of the neighborhood and not be a detriment to nearby properties. No other feasible method is available to the applicant uh, for that benefit. And the variance is not substantial and will not have a, uh, an adverse effect on the uh, physical or environmental conditions of the neighborhood. Um, with respect to the uh, development coverage, um, the applicant uh, has indicated that they are impeded by the fact that they share a traffic circle. And because of that nature of the property, which is somewhat unique, uh, their development coverage um, is restricted uh, substantially and without it, without having to include the circle, you wouldn't need the, uh, Correct. the variance. Um, so the neighbors uh, are not in opposition to this. The, the requested variance of the development coverage is um, uh, will not create an undesirable change to the neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties. No other feasible method is available, which is likely to achieve that benefit. Um, the variance is not substantial and uh, will not have an adverse uh, effect uh, or impact on the physical or environmental conditions of the neighborhood. So for these reasons, I move that we approve the application. We'll need a... Um, a foundation survey, or are yes. you going to put a new foundation in the? Yes. Okay, foundation survey. Um, six months to start, a year to complete. Uh, I second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Have your parents. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll read that later. Yes, yes. Osmani is next. Hi. Good evening, Chairman and uh, Board Members. My name is Vincent Mastromarco, consultant with uh, Trevor uh, Spearman, architect uh, representing Mr. Os Osmani, the uh, owner of the property on Four House Lane. Um, Before we get started, sir, yes. Um, unless I'm unaware of this being a special section of town, your your application says that uh, you 60 foot is a required uh, setback, and it, it is not. It's 50 feet. I believe it's 50 feet. Yeah, correct. But you, you've written 60 on the application. I think when Mr. Spearman filed foot? the applications, I think they had originally thought it was 60, but then okay. we learned it was actually 50. And also on your coverage calculation, you doubled up your numbers. Um, which you didn't need to do, so oh, I'll okay. get it to our secretary. She'll fix it. She'll fix it? Great. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's it just, 
It's just that for the record, I think they should be right. Definitely. Uh, I, agree. I understand what you're doing and the numbers come out right, but you, you wrote them double and it shouldn't be that way. Thank you. I agree. Sorry to interrupt. Continue. No so uh, basically it's a, uh, the owner would like to, I, I'm, I'm guessing everybody has this drawing in front of them. Yes. Uh, the owner would like to build a shed to house his, uh, his firewood uh, to protect it from rotting and anything else. Uh, the shed will be a well-built, custom, uh, uh, stick-built construction and will match the siding and the uh, roof shingles. Um, the only variance that's required here is the rear yard, as, as you mentioned. Uh, we have a setback of 24 feet. I mean, I'm sorry, we have the shed at 24 feet and a variance would be for 26 feet. We are considerably far away from Bedford Road, 60, I believe, 89 feet, and there's a row of evergreens. Um, there is a stream down the property. We're about 30 feet away from the, from, uh, the shed. Um, How did you go about selecting the location to place the shed? The, the owner actually currently has a concrete pad there where he has his uh, pile, and he's got this wonderful bright blue tarp that covers the wood. You could all see that bright blue. So basically that's why we want to build a shed to enclose, enclose the wood and, 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 match the, uh, and match the house. Uh, Mr. Spearman had met with um, Steve Coleman. Is that, I don't even know if that's yes. you, sir. Uh, on this, oh, that's not you. He, he met on the site informally and um, Mr. Uh, Coleman had suggested putting some plantings in front of the shed, which we have done, which is shown on the drawings. Also spoke about putting in some check dams, one or two, which, which we also have done, and to call out for a, a no mow zone in front of the uh, in front of this stream, which we also are calling out for. Um, we know that a wetlands permit would be required, and I guess that's why Mr. Coleman had suggested those, and that was prob would probably be more for that so has board. He, has so he seen your, your recommendations? I believe it was informally, but yes. So these were we we took those and, and added it to the drawings. So I don't think there's anything more. I think it's a simple application. Um, the neighbors who might live, um, the it's it's uh, I don't know how far it is, but it's in the back here. I think that you might be able to see it in one of these pictures. Coleman seems interested in uh, yes. screening the shed from Old House Road, but it's not necessary, in your estimation, to do any screening as it relates to neighbors. You can see the blue tarp, and you can see the home in the back. It's considerably far away. And then it's a, it's a corner lot, so he's on Bedford Road, which is it's, um, blocked by evergreens. <coughs> Are there any neighbors in the audience who wish to speak to this application? So the only reason he wants it in that location is because there's a... Uh, the slab is already poured and that's where the current uh, stockpile is and... Yeah, so we just wanted to, to just enclose it there. It's also located. Is big enough? I mean, the yes, it's a 12 by 20 slab. We're just going to build. You're building a 12 by 20. Uh, 12 shed? by 20 shed. Yeah. Is it it's, better, it's on that drawing. Better for the wood to be enclosed uh, than under a tarp. Uh, yes, for for appearance, obviously, but yes, for for rotting purposes as well. Sure. There will be no electricity in the shed as well. It's just going to have maybe some uh, solar lights. We also, the shed is also um, set in that location because it's also aligned with the back of the house, more or less. We didn't want to put it in the front yard, in, you know, in front of the house or on the side of the house. It's set back enough. So you said he requires a wet, he's going to require a wetland for this? Yes. Or? 
Was there a wetland permit required for the Excuse slab? Excuse me. 20, 26. 26, right. 26. No. His, his, his rights for that. And for, the, and for the tarp, actually. When was the slab installed? I think it was last year, but I'm not certain. The, Mr. Coleman didn't have an issue with the slab being there, huh? No. I don't think he does any issue violations, does he? Well, we'll make it a condition that Mr. Coleman review and approve the. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, that 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 the that the um, requirements shown on this plan be either part of a condition to this application or to the um, wetland permit, and that the, the obtaining of a wetland permit also be a right. That's going to be preserved. Right. right. Anything else by the board? Move that we close the public hearing. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 I'd like to make a motion. <coughs> I'll do it. Um, move that we uh, grant uh, Osman Osmani a uh, variance, a 26 foot rear yard variance for the installation of a uh, shed. Um, and granting the variance will create no undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood. Um, the shed could be placed in other locations, but it appears that there's already a concrete slab <coughs> in this location, and uh, it's, it appears that it's a good location for the homeowner to store his wood. Um, I don't believe, in light of the size of the property, the uh, variance is great and sub or substantial. And the variance will have no adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood. Um, this is a self-created hardship, however. Um, but for those reasons, and also I want to add that uh, this approval by this board would be uh, subject to the approval by the wetland uh, commission or permit yep. that must be obtained also. Yep. Uh, for those reasons, I move that we approve the application. Second. I'll, sec I'll second. I'm sorry. You say when he would be starting and finishing? Uh, well, I, uh, six months to start, one year to finish. Okay. Well, uh, approval from the wetlands, though, right? Because that could take, I don't know how long that would take, the approval on that. It would be from the date of this approval, actually. So it would be the date from the, uh, yeah. I assume you can get an approval from what? wetlands pretty quickly you're okay. not building a house you right right you know, okay within six months and, you and he already start. met with mr coleman so that should be Correct. favorable so six months to start one year to finish and if you require any additional time you would just need to send us a letter saying why you need an extension any additional time yeah. okay i'll second all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. Opposed? thank you thank you, thank you. <coughs> majumdar Not legal. Yeah, that's Good evening. Uh, my name is Troy Wojciechowski, engineer for the applicant, the Mahumdars, 19 Random Farms Drive. Um, the application before you tonight is for two variances, a side yard as well as the total side yards. Um, this project actually involves, before you, uh, an addition, a 12 and a half by 15 and a half foot addition to the rear corner of the house. Uh, however, that was part of a, a larger application that was approved conditionally by this planning board last month that also included a pool and a patio. Um, the existing home is actually non-conforming, pretty close, but just non-conforming. Brought the uh, site plan, we'll color it up for you. These are the yard setbacks, and as you can see, the house was constructed basically on the side yard, and at this rear corner here, it's an inch over, so they just missed. Um, but then as you add the total side yards, they missed by more on that. I think the house was built in the 80s. Um, as you can see here, the green is the proposed location of the uh, addition. It's a first floor and second floor addition, so you'll still have the walkout 
condition from the basement level. Um, I included some photos of the, the house as it exists from the side and from the rear. And as you can see from your site plan, the uh, addition actually wouldn't be visible from the street, really would only be visible from the next door neighbor, the Audettes. Um, there's a pretty significant um, wooded, called a buffer along the, uh, the property line shared between the two properties. I actually worked on that a few years ago. Um, but again, it's not something that's an eyesore. Basically, instead of being one inch over existing, the new addition because of the skew of this would be about four inches over the setback. So we'd be looking for a, a variance of, um, I guess from 20 to 19 feet, I think. <laughs> And then whatever the uh, the sum of the two uh, side yards would be. I think that's all I have. Unless you want me to go through some pictures, or if you have questions. I believe they're making their bed, just the master bedroom, they're making that larger, so they're pushing the bathroom back, at least on the, uh, the one floor, and I think the, that's the second floor, the first floor, I believe it's make, it'll make the dining room larger. The, uh, the addition, uh, what's going to be the height of the addition? So it's not going to be any taller than the existing house. Um, let's see if I can read the architecturals here. Yeah, here is the addition looking at the rear view. So it looks like the peak is going to be even with the existing peak of the house. So you can see here's the walk out from the basement, mm -hmm. first floor, second floor, and they're matching the peaks. So you're not increasing the height over. Correct. Uh, did you say that bo both side yards are, are non conforming? Both? Correct. You have the single side yard is uh, is off by an inch, okay. but you have the also requirement of the combination of the two side yards um, right. that misses as well because the garage the garage in itself you can see is not is within um, the setback. But when you add this plus this, the existing house is meets doesn't meet that as well. foot and a four foot is that correct yes the required side yard is 20 foot we're asking for a 19 foot because mm -hmm. I believe the town goes to the nearest foot and the total combined side yards is, is 50 feet we're asking for 46 feet okay okay second all those in favor say aye. 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 Would you like to make a motion? I'll make a motion at the application of uh, Ishapa Bunju Manjumdar. Did I get that right? <laughs> Pretty close. <laughs> close enough. For, <laughs> for a 
for two variances. Um, one side yard variance of uh, uh, one foot and it's a combined side yard variance of four feet be approved for the following reasons. Uh, this particular property is in a unique area of town. It's in a conservation zone where it's a one acre zone, but half acre bulk requirements are what need to be followed, which puts a restraint on most of the things that you want to do there. Um, the uh, granting of the variance will not create an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood. Uh, there is no other feasible method to achieve the desired end. Uh, this is not a substantial request for variances. Um, the, uh, there have been no neighbors in opposition to this application. Um, and you could provide us with a foundation survey prior to framing. Uh, you'll have six months to start and one year to finish. We should grant. I second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Forty. <coughs> I am here, uh, Lucia Piscopillo, and I'm here to represent Mr. Forney. Uh, we are requesting, um, seeking a variance of six feet. Um, for the purpose of installing a generator and the reason for it is so that the generator could be located uh, far from the house so to prevent carbon monoxide and so therefore we are asking a six feet variance. So how did you come to pick the specific location that you did for the generator? I understand you didn't want it up against the house but how did you come to select this location? How did we come? Well, um, we worked with um, Bruce Thompson um, because we originally had put in an application and Bruce suggested that the best location would be there. And um, being that on that side, it's wooded area. So it really does not affect any uh, of the neighbors. So What uh, fuel supply will it be? It will be propane. Propane. And is the location of the generator in proximity to other electrical service or? Um, no, it's on the side of the garage. So there is no other impact there. Does it um, come into close proximity to any neighbor? No. Um, as I said, on that side of the property is nothing but wooded area. Wooded. So yeah, it does not impact the neighbors. And how far is it from the house? Um, 12 feet. It'll be 12 feet out from that. Right. Um, are you planning to, to put any, um, shrubbery or, or plantings around? Um, no, unless it's a requirement. Um, because of where it's located, it really, there is no impact. So currently there are no plans of putting any shrubs. Is, is it going to be visible from our court? Um, it's really set back and like I said, it's on the side. Um, I guess the reason for the variance is because of the shape of the lot of the property. The triangle? It's a triangle, right. So that's why, um, it's narrow as it goes back. The front of the, uh, of the lot is really wide. D does it show in this w where the generator is going at all? Yes. Are there any uh, the windows on the side of that? Uh, of the garage? Oh. Um, I don't believe so, no. So, um, I, are you aware of what is the maximum uh, or the minimal distance from the structure that the generator can be located? I believe it's 10. It has to be set off the house. 18 inches. 18, 18, 18 inches. inches. Okay. So it's like a little, two, it's a foot and a half. And you've asked for six feet. The variance is for six feet, mm -hmm. yes, because Bruce would not approve the original location when we submitted for the permit. He suggested that we move further from the garage. 
Well, there's two variances. There's a combined side yard, and then there's a regular side yard. So it looks like the the regular side yard is 12 feet. is is an eight foot variance. They're looking for it eight feet off. Um, they're looking for an eight foot variance, 12 foot off. The, I I don't know what the distance is from the generator to the side of the garage. Is the question I guess you're asking? Well, she's saying it's six, six feet. Six six feet. But oh, that's what, what she what? said. Where only okay. two feet is required. Why why six feet? Mm -hmm. That's the question. I apologize. I don't know the details. I didn't. Was Can you not. describe the stone wall that we see on the plans? Oh, yeah, there's an existing. There's an existing the stone existing wall. stone wall is there, was there. I. How high is approximately is that stone wall? I'm sorry, I don't know the height of the stone wall. Have you seen the stone wall? I have not been on premises, okay. no. I mean, I could get back to you if you need to know the, the height. Of the stone wall? Well, the stone wall could be a natural blockade, but you'd have to maintain, you know, a distance from the stone wall for serviceability of the unit. Mm -hmm. um, and I apologize, I don't know. They well, have that, marked here 12 feet, but... That's unclear to me because the stone wall could be a retaining wall and the grade could be up there, it could be on top of the wall. Or it could be behind the wall. How do we how do we know that? We don't. We just see masonry stone wall on the side. Yeah, plane. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. If it's behind it is one thing because then it's blocked from view from view everybody's that was view. What prompted my question if it's up on top, that's another story. On, in in the denial letter it just says proposed location for the generator will be at the top and immediately rear of a small one and a half foot high retaining wall to the left of the existing oh, garage. So it's at the top of the wall. Okay. Well to the left it says to the top and immediately rear. I, I'm not sure. I don't really understand what that means. <laughs> if you were to look at the, the site plan. Yeah, no, I did yeah. see the site plan, yeah. but I wasn't still, you know, I, is this the wall he's talking about? Yes. Yeah, it, so it's hard to, it's still hard to tell if he right. says on the top. How, I'm just curious, how, how did this um, generator end up on a survey that was dated 1961? Um, I believe that's what was on file here. That it was provided to us. It was hand drawn on the surface. It was hand drawn. Yes. Okay. You represent the, the generator company, or yes, yeah, actually, it's Baldwin Electric. Yes. Baldwin Electric. Okay. And Mr. Yeah. Forney could not be here. They're on way on vacation. There are. Is it typical to have three propane tanks for a generator? Uh, yes. There are three the big, uh, one twenty gallon tanks. 120 gallon tanks. Okay. Does anyone on the board feel like uh, it would be helpful um, to have the applicant return with uh, photographs of the property and particularly this side of the house? Yeah, I, I think we're, we're still questioning. Do, are you clear on exactly where it's located in relation to this wall and the topography involved? Which I'm not. I don't know. Yeah, I'd, li I'd like to. I can't I'd, figure it out. I think it'd be worth it. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, also like an explanation why it has to go six feet as opposed to <coughs> two feet. Right. Are there windows on the side of the garage that the I generator is going to be placed at? There. No, if there are no windows there, then it could be put closer to the garage because then you don't have a, a monoxide uh, uh, problem, which would move it away from the property line a little bit and make it less of a variance and still achieve the same end. Now if it's only, if the code only requires it to be, what'd you say, 18, 18 inches? 18, 18, inches. 18 inches off the building. Right. There is a minimum distance to a propane tank that we'd have to adhere to. I don't know that number. Okay, but if you, if where I'm looking at the propane tanks on the plan, if you move the, the generator closer to the building, it doesn't really change the, the back and forth dimension too much. Just wanted to point that out that we can't. Yeah, yeah, no, that's corner. okay. But, but then it could be moved forward a tad too, maybe in front of that wall, if, if need be. Um, that's why we should have some, either some pictures of uh, what's going on there or, or some kind of a topo plan, uh, okay. rather than make a field trip just for something like this, if we can get a better idea with some photos and um, maybe, maybe a better idea as to, as to how this retaining wall is, is, is uh, acting on the property, what it's doing. That should help everybody out. We don't know the elevations of no, the No, we don't have we don't have any elevations. Half high. We don't know if the front or the back is high or low. Right. You know. But if there if just check me if I'm right or wrong, if there are no windows on the side of the garage, 
and the generator is closer, then you're not you're not looking for a, a carbon monoxide problem. You are correct. Yeah. So we could, if we moved it in, if if it's doable, after correct. seeing a better idea of what's going on there, it, they would still get their generator, and we would get a smaller variance, and that would make everybody happy. So, so I think we'd ask a couple things. Number one, if you would uh, arrange to have photos taken of the area. Photos of the area where the generator is going to, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And secondly, if in returning you would consider uh, whether the generator can be moved uh, uh, closer to the structure uh, so that there's less intrusion into the okay. side yard. Okay. okay. I believe it was at the suggestion of Mr. Thompson to be moved far, but as so Mr. Thompson is in here, so we I know well, we I need, understand. We need I also understand. some pictures of the structure, the side of the structure, okay. to ascertain whether there are any windows or okay. any, uh, any other openings in that. Okay. And um, in relation to the stone wall, what is it exactly that you're looking for? We'd like to see the elevation difference, if we can get some dimensions. Okay. It's unclear which side is higher or lower, front or back, or if they're both the same. It's only a, just a, a small stone wall. Yeah. If it's in fact a retaining wall, it's holding something back, because then if the front is higher, then the unit could go behind it and be obscured from the front view. OK. Anything else? OK. All right, thank, thank you. you. See you next one. Okay, thanks. That's it. We just need minutes. Yeah. I move that the board adopt the meeting minutes for the May 16th and May. We have two meetings? Yeah. Okay, May 16th and May 30th uh, meetings. I'll uh, second that. All those in favor say aye. Aye. aye.